good afternoon. Welcome to the CHK Law, CCTL, Corporate Law and the Governors Cluster Seminar Series. Um, I'm uh, Charles Shee. I'm the moderator uh, of uh, today's uh, seminar. Now, today we have the distinguished pleasure uh, of having uh, Professor uh, Ching Liu uh, to give a, a seminar talk uh, on a, a very important topic, um, online consumer review, information disclosure, and the quality of professional services. Uh, now, before I start, uh, let me just uh, uh, give a brief introduction uh, of, of to your speakers uh, today. Now, Professor Liu is Associate Professor uh, at East China University of Political Science and the Law. Her uh, empirical research concerned uh, liability litigation, occupational licensing, and information disclosures as quality assurance mechanisms of professional services. Her scholarships on the US toll reform, healthcare regulation and finance, and the legal representation market appear in legal international journals, including Journal of Empirical Legal Studies uh, and any review of law and social sciences. Uh, her researchers in Chinese uh, are currently funded by the National Social Science Fund of China. Uh, she received her degrees from University, University of Illinois, uh, Cornell University and East China University of Political Science uh, and the Law. Now, uh, we also have uh, a distinguished pleasure today uh, of having discussant, uh, Professor Haitian Liu. Um, professor Liu is a professor in law and finance uh, at School of Accounting and Finance uh, of uh, Hong Kong Polytechnic uh, University. Uh, he's also the director of China, Chinese Mainland Affairs Office of uh, the university. Uh, and he uh, concurrently serves as the deputy director of the University Center of Economic Sustainability and Entrepreneurial uh, fin Finance. Um, Professor Liu obtained his PhD in law from National University of Singapore, Master of Laws uh, from Liverpool University and a Bachelor of Laws from Na Nanjing University. From January to June 2016, he was a visiting research professor at U U New York University Stern University uh, School of uh, Business. Um, he has published extensively. He's also uh, and the co-author of three uh, very uh, important books. Uh, and he, Professor Liu, contributes also significantly to the academic and professional society in Hong Kong uh, and beyond. Now, without further ado, uh, let me invite uh, Professor Liu, our speaker, uh, to give the talk. Over to you, Professor Liu. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yes, thank you. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you for having me. And thank you, Professor Liu and uh, uh, Bonnie for having uh, putting this together. And of course, thank you for uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, so today I will be talking about um, information and uh, how information might affect a consumer choice in real life, uh, real everyday life. Um, now, let me, uh, well, let me actually start uh, sharing my screen. Um, yeah. Sharing screen. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me uh, actually start with this. Uh, so let's assume that you've heard a new restaurant opening up in your neighborhood and you are trying to decide uh, whether you want to visit there or not. Or let's say you want to go to a movie in, uh, on a Saturday night and there are a number of them um, to choose from. Um, what's the first thing that comes up to you? Um, well, you can always look at the advertisement and uh, presumably uh, the, the sellers and the maker of uh, the movies and the food have more information than you. Um, but chances are that we will also try to look at what other consumers say about the goods or the services um, uh, to help us actually make the decisions. Now, so dining out and uh, going for a movie are experienced goods, uh, which means that the, uh, the food and the movies are 
uh, have to be consumed or experienced uh, to be evaluated. Um, so online consumer goods, uh, consumer reviews uh, with the help of uh, internet and our phones just make that much easier. And uh, with just one click uh, like this, uh, we now have access to like firsthand information about what uh, the services or good that we are uh, trying to, uh, we are interested in um, all the information about them. Um, so the, the good of the online, uh, the benefits about online consumer reviews are uh, that they, it kind of solved the information asymmetry problem where the seller have much, uh, much more information than the buyer um, with relatively low searching cost, just like this one click. Um, and it turns out that people are increasingly using online reviews for healthcare services. Um, so today's talk will be, uh, I will, is actually based on a one of our recent uh, study on the quality of healthcare services and how information from online consumer con consumer reviews would help to um, kind of uh, function as a quality control mechanisms. Uh, so. Um, it, it we'll get to that, uh, get to more details uh, later in the seminar, but it's probably important to point out uh, at the front that uh, although we look at uh, the specific domain of healthcare uh, services or uh, choosing a physician, but um, the information, the quality information problems um, have the, has a, a broader uh, application or uh, theoretical framework than just uh, healthcare services. So uh, it's so uh, many market sectors actually have this uh, inform quality information issues. Um, and for those of you who work in uh, finance and accounting and uh, securities uh, and healthcare. Uh, public health or uh, food and beverage policies, those are all um, well-studied areas or market sectors uh, that involves quality information problems. Um, so, uh, and I'm health- Sorry to interrupt, it could be a, a technical hiccup uh, on my end, uh, but uh, I, I'm not sure whether your PPDs are, are now set in motion. Um, oh. as your end. Uh, oh, it, it's right, it's a post again. Uh, why is that? So let me actually um, try again. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to share the slides again. It's now, it is supposed to Oh, it's paused again. Uh, it appears that I can't uh, make it. So uh, no worries, Professor Leo. We have uh, a copy of your PPT. What we'll do is uh, uh, we'll very quickly just carry on. We'll set up uh, the PPTs uh, at our end. Uh, so uh, so uh, is it is it working now? So I can't uh, like I I, yeah. I can make it work. Yeah. Like this, okay. It works. So, yeah, it so works. All right. As long as I, I I don't use the full screen, it appears to work. So that's just sure. goes. Yeah, it works. Um, it works. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's it's uh, sharing. Yeah. So um, the broader appeals. So so uh, so I assume that uh, the audience uh, uh, are much more familiar with uh, the information disclosure issue in uh, finance or. Uh, uh, security domains, but let's actually take a few minutes to uh, to try to frame the, the issue in a much more broader uh, context. Um, so, uh, in, why do we actually care about information when we want to study uh, to study market or or quality of services? Um, so, note that information disclosure is just uh, one of the quality uh, control mechanisms. 
Other well-studied uh, uh, mechanisms include uh, litigations, which is uh, kind of exposed uh, uh, a, a regime to, um, to uh, uh, for quality control. And we also have regulations and uh, for example, occupational licensings. Um, and, uh, and there are other market mechanisms, uh, including advertising and uh, branding, uh, for example. And um, so what's so special about information disclosure? Um, well, one of the proposed uh, uh, benefits of information disclosure is that it helps consumer uh, making better or informed decisions with relatively a low searching cost, um, or more specifically, uh, the more the information disclosure helps the consumer to uh, kind of migrate, migrate to the higher quality seller, or uh, alternatively, uh, consumers might be able to find um, to find the the products that uh, best meet their idiosyncratic. Uh, uh, needs. Uh, those are called um, vertical and horizontal sorting. And uh, both vertical and horizontal sorting are believed to be um, important uh, uh, to uh, increase the social welfare, even if the quality uh, attributes or uh, quality attributes or other kinds of uh, product attributes remain unchanged. So it is uh, relatively un, uh, relatively low searching cost and it helps consumers to make better decisions. Um, so, it, but well, in real life, it is uh, always, always more complications. Um, behavioral scientists, for example, uh, make observations that um, buyers may have limited attention and they uh, even if the information are disclosed, uh, some of the buyers may be uh, inattentive to uh, the quality information. So that kind of interrupt the, the flow of information and its way to improve uh, social welfare. And uh, more importantly, and when the quality is kind of multi-dimensional, that is, uh, there are more uh, multiple aspects of quality uh, of a product or of a uh, uh, service. Um, seller or experienced sellers tend to um, ha employ those gaming behavior. They will try to um, disclose the dimension of quality that are required to be uh, disclosed and try to hide the information that are not. So uh, that is also some kind of um, uh, barriers or uh, interruption for uh, the, the, the theoretical prediction to fail. Um, so this is kind of uh, the, the general framework of information disclosure and why we uh, try to study this issue in multiple uh, various market sectors. So, uh, so the, so the, uh, there are obviously multiple market sectors. Uh, there are empirical studies uh, working on uh, the actual functioning of the, uh, the information disclosure in various markets. That is, um, you, uh, for those of you who, uh, whose expertise are in uh, finance and accounting, uh, there are market response, uh, studies on market response to bond ratings, uh, which is another kind of, um, uh, third-party information disclosure. And People in Contracts works on uh, the, the, the effects, e efficiency of um, the information being disclosed by the standard form contract, contract terms. And um, well, uh, there are other uh, domains such as uh, public health, uh, food and uh, food services, uh, nutrition labeling, uh, restaurant hygiene, uh, grade cards, um, education that is school quality, uh, sports, um, things like that. Uh, so the idea is there that uh, although we look at specific domain of healthcare services, but there are uh, uh, well-known studies in all kinds of uh, market sectors uh, 
all contribute to our understanding of the real life uh, application of uh, information disclosure. Um, and if you are more of a law and economic person, then uh, you, uh, chances are that you are familiar with uh, the line, long line, long history of um, the trade-offs of uh, trade-offs between liability and regulations to deal with externalities, uh, which is just uh, law and econ's terms of describing uh, the kind of uh, quality quality information thing and uh, and the, the the social controls. Um, and uh, the, the, that is why um, a why a healthcare services study should uh, have a broader appeal to uh, those of you in the audience. And uh, uh, just a, a, a few, uh, just a brief uh, kind of preview. So we also employed uh, a kind of an untraditional research method uh, called natural language processing, which essentially is that we use text as data um, to extract information and to understand which information are disclosed in uh, online reviews for healthcare qualities. So for those of you who are more interested in uh, exciting new research tools, um, this, is, can, this, this can be another uh, piece of the bigger picture for you. Um, so that is kind of um, the bigger picture of why uh, a wide uh, study of healthcare services can have a uh, broader uh, uh, interest for you. Um, so this is actually, as I mentioned, uh, one of our studies, uh, a series of projects on uh, healthcare uh, healthcare service qualities. Um, in other studies, we actually did study uh, litigations and regulations. And uh, what we find that, well, in short, they have their own limitations. And we will um, get to a little bit more details at the end uh, of the seminar if we have uh, time to do that. Um, so the point is, uh, uh, so the series papers is about uh, qualities of serv uh, healthcare services, which is a classic example of information problem. Uh, there's a knowledge gap between uh, obvious uh, knowledge gap, medical knowledge gap between the providers and the consumers. So, um, which is believed to be the, the, the major barrier uh, for achieving better uh, service outcomes and a lower cost actually. Um, so we've studied litigation, we've studied regulation and the idea of the current paper is to see uh, whether uh, the information contained in um, online consumer reviews can function as a uh, quality control mechanisms. And this is, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is, well, just uh, another piece of the quality control, um, multi-dimension um, uh, social controls. And uh, the main question that we are trying to address in the specific paper is that, well, first, are there information about quality that are uh, flowed from previous consumers to uh, future consumers? And this is uh, similar to uh, seller disclosure, but not exactly. It is uh, information flow from previous uh, consumer to uh, uh, well, future consumers. And, and uh, this is the first question are there any information disclosed? And the second question is, if the, the quality information are not disclosed, uh, not con conveyed in the uh, consumer reviews, then what information are disclosed? And are those information kind of correlated uh, well with other um, clinical measure of healthcare services. So the idea is, are there information? And if there are no information directly about quality, then, then whether the information disclosed are 
uh, well, well lined up with the established measure of uh, healthcare quality. So that is the question that we are trying to address in this uh, paper. Um, and now, so the data we, um, we collected for answering that question uh, are uh, kind of two parts. We collected uh, star ratings and written comments from uh, five uh, uh, most commonly used or most popular uh, online review platforms uh, used in the United States. Um, we, we, you, uh, we, we, so, so both star ratings, those are the numerical uh, ratings uh, with one star being the lowest and five star being the highest and written comments are optional. Those are, uh, you can just rate the physician without leaving any uh, written comments, but you can also uh, both rate and re uh, leave a comments about the services. Um, so uh, those are the things that we collected and we collected ratings and comments for um, a questionable uh, and control physicians, which we will get to uh, more details in just a second. So basically it is our sampling strategy is a matched pair case and control case control studies, which means that we first pick out uh, all the cases. Uh, well, matched case uh, matched pair case control study is a commonly used strategy in uh, public health and medical literature uh, to study rare disease. Uh, the main reason is that it is efficiency. So we use all the cases or ill people, if you will, and um, we paired each of the case with uh, control that is non-ill person or for our cases, it's uh, clean record uh, physicians. So the worst, the, the questionable or the case doctors in our cases are the physicians who have repeated paid med medical malpractice claims, uh, they have been sued uh, for torts. And um, they have been disciplined by their licensing board. That is um, extremely rare. So those are uh, kind of the worst 0.2% uh, of the physician in each state. Um, so they have to be kind of, uh, 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 they have events from both uh, systems, they have been sued and they have been disciplined and they actually have repeated events. So those are um, really the worst of the worst. And we pair each of those questionable doctors with a control and the controls, uh, we pick out the controls from actually a, a two very large uh, four samples uh, covers a very long uh, period of time and covers all practicing uh, physicians uh, during that time frame. And but we we opt for a one to one matches. So the idea is that we have all the worst physicians in our sample, and we try to find those um, absolute uh, clean record controls uh, to pair with each of the questionable doctors, and we. Um, uh, kind of uh, uh, meshed them based on some of the demographic and practicing attributes. Um, this is the data that we uh, collected to answer the, uh, this is the data and uh, kind of the, the, in, the sampling strategy and uh, the data. So let's take a look at how the, uh, the, uh, online review actually looks like. Oh, let's pause it again. Um, so it looks like this. Um, it's actually animated, but it appears that I can't have it. So the idea is that uh, it has a star rating, a numerical star rating, and uh, there are um, written comments, it's optional. And there are background checks, um, which uh, in which the online review platforms offer to offer the information of whether the physician have been 
uh, previously sanctioned and sued. Um, but this is actually a very nice illustration of uh, the point that we are trying to address in our paper. Uh, this this uh, Dr. Jared is actually one of our questionable doctors, which means this doctor actually has been sued for multiple times and have been disciplined. Um, but as you can see, um, the background check from the online review didn't even try to pick out that. Uh, and the ratings and the comments, this is the rating like 4.8 out of uh, five. And this is uh, the written comments. Uh, both the ratings and comments are like extremely positive for one of the doctors that have extremely worst uh, practicing records in the state. Um, so this is kind of a, a healthcare version of uh, the experience that we, we all have, that we uh, go to a restaurant with a high rating from Yelp and that restaurant later disappointed. Um, so this is the uh, kind of uh, the, the data, actual data that we try to uh, uh, used to answer our questions, both star ratings and written comments for questionable and controlled doctors. So uh, a, 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 a note on uh, the method that we used to answer the question. So, so again, the question we try to answer is that uh, whether there are quality information conveyed in online review, and second, if the information are not about quality, then whether the information correlated well with uh, established uh, standards of quality. Um, so uh, the study design that we uh, uh, choose to answer those questions are um, kind of also two parts. For the star ratings, the numerical ratings, uh, as I mentioned, we try to use a mesh pair case control studies uh, in which we uh, use all of the cases, uh, the, the worst doctors, and we try to match uh, for them, each of them with a clean record uh, physician. And for written comments, um, we used a, uh, a kind of a new set of techniques called natural language processing. Um, uh, Again, we will try to get into a little bit more details when we actually talk about uh, uh, written review, uh, written comments, but let's first uh, uh, get a uh, short uh, kind of preview. So what is natural language processing? Um, it's basically how we deal with text data. Uh, natural language is uh, the language that are used by human beings uh, that we use every day uh, to communicate with each other. So those are the languages evolved over time that we use every day, every day uh, communications. And processing just means computers carry out uh, instructions. So natural language processing for the purpose of, uh, the, uh, for our purpose is just um, the algorithm that we write to uh, for, to communicate with the computer, for, for the computer to understand the language that we use and try to help us extract information from uh, the languages or the text and to make further uh, inferences. So, natural, so, so in short, the natural language processing is basically about how we deal with text as data. Um, this is a little bit different from the traditional uh, more structured uh, numerical data that we use. Uh, uh, so the traditional data that we use in social science, uh, social science uh, uh, research are uh, basically um, well numbers and it's more structured. And the natural language processing deal with text data. Uh, texts are inherently high dimensional. That is, it's very, well, the, the, the words in text are like uh, data points and numerical data. Um, so text data are extremely sparse or scattered. That is, uh, we have thousands of, of words in a, a short paragraph of text. So this is 
this makes uh, the methods to uh, process natural language a little bit different from those of uh, we used for uh, traditional numerical data. Um, well, in short, we have to use uh, uh, the method that are traditionally used for high dimensional data, uh, which usually involved ma uh, machine learnings and uh, machine learning techniques. So this is natural language processing. Uh, that is the tools that we use to analyze uh, the written reviews. So natural language processing have um, a very broad use in everyday life. It's, it's maybe uh, broader than you have imagined uh, from the high Siri function in your phone to spelling check uh, spell check uh, comes with your word processor and from uh, Google Translate to uh, the artificial consumer service that you hate for your online uh, online shopping experience. All those involve uh, human interact with machine and involves machine understanding our languages and try to make further inferences, extract information and make inferences. So those uh, basically uh, gives you a brief idea of what, uh, what a natural language processing is, is what and what we used it to uh, help us making uh, in inferences about uh, the written uh, written comments uh, because written comments, uh, unlike the star readings, they are uh, they are right in uh, well, words and text. So we we try to again try to extract the information uh, from the text and try to uh, decide whether the information is about quality and whether uh, the information or or whether the information correlated with uh, quality. That's the idea and that's and the method and data uh, that we employed to uh, try to address that idea. Um, so, um, uh, so just another kind of brief uh, uh, note on the previous research and, and uh, how our research contribute to uh, that line of inquiry. So there are previous studies on uh, online reviews, obviously. Uh, this is actually a, a very well-studied area in computer science. Uh, there are studies about uh, online reviews in marketing uh, and uh, marketing that is about online shopping and consumer satisfactions and in other all kinds of domains. And there are a few studies on uh, a number of studies on online re review of uh, physicians, actually there are. Um, uh, the conclusions of those uh, most related uh, study is that a uh, previous study find that most of the ratings are positive, positive. Uh, that's probably uh, lines well with our personal experience that if you look on uh, Yelp, most of the restaurants have like uh, 4.5 stars and above. So most ratings are positive. And uh, uh, previous studies also show that uh, the reviews are uh, tend to more about uh, the feelings about patient satisfactions rather than uh, product qualities. That applies to online re uh, online reviews of, for example, video games, uh, um, and other kinds of services, and also to uh, rating of physicians. Um, what's our contribution? Um, we well, first we confirm that uh, we also find many of the online consumer reviews are positive, um, uh, and we kind of demonstrate that the reviews. Uh, kind of failed to capture uh, the quality indicators uh, established by traditional clinical quality standard. Uh, so, so uh, this is the step that we uh, uh, kind of. Uh, this is kind of our contribution to that line of research. Um, so this is like a, a preview, and let's actually look at. Um, uh, the findings that uh, we have from our paper. Um, so uh, 
the findings will uh, be, uh, well, I will break down the findings into two parts. We will first look at the star ratings and then uh, we will make our way to uh, written comments. Um, again, the question we are trying to answer is whether quality information is disclosed and if not, then whether the information disclosed is correlated with established standard of quality. So, uh, a starting point for that is whether there are information actually disclosed. Uh, are there enough information? So uh, in terms of star ratings, that is the coverage, coverage of star ratings. So I left out all the details and, and uh, coverage for, um, for now is that how many uh, doctors in our sample are actually uh, are actually rated on any of those uh, a popular uh, online consumer review platforms. Um, well, it turns out that the coverage is incomplete at best. Um, it's mostly less than half of the doctors are reviewed or around half of the doctors are reviewed. So uh, there are some uh, variations uh, among states and uh, actually among the rating services. So uh, for those of you who, uh, who are not particularly familiar with the two Midwestern states, uh, Illinois are uh, more popular, uh, popular um, uh, is, a, is a, well, it, it has the city of Chicago, so it's a more populous uh, state than the state of Indiana. So which might offer some of the explanation for why um, Illinois have more uh, reviews than Indiana, but that is a just a tentative explanation and it's not clear why we have this kind of uh, between state variations. but. But the, in short, we do have incomplete coverage. It's just about half of the doctors in our samples are reviewed. Um, it doesn't matter uh, he or she is a questionable doctor, that is the worst of all, or he or she is a control doctor, that, that is uh, the absolute clean record doctors. Um, it's just about half of them are uh, rated online. Uh, from any of the five popular online consumer uh, review services. So are there information at all? Well, it's incomplete to start with. Um, and uh, there are variations, and, but, but all of them are incomplete at best. Um, so that is the first question, are there any information? And well, the second question we ought to answer our, uh, uh, ask ourselves is, uh, well, this is also animated. Um, the second question ought to be uh, whether uh, the, the, the information uh, do con conveyed in the online consumer services, are there, uh, well, are they accurate? That is, um, the, the illustration, the screenshot for the online review that we uh, saw at the beginning of uh, this, the, the talk that is uh, Dr. Jared's review. So there's a background check for, from uh, one of the, uh, the review services. So the services try to offer uh, the previous medical malpractice re uh, record and the licensing discipline for each of the doctors. And um, we, the idea here is to see, uh, according to our official record uh, from uh, the states, actually the state of Illinois and the state of Indiana, uh, that is uh, the in Department of Insurance and, and uh, the state licensing board. Uh, we have, uh, we have, um, uh, well, the idea is that we have the official record of all those doctors and we try to use uh, medical malpractice history and licensing discipline history as the standard for uh, clinical quality. Um, so, and idea here is obviously to see uh, whether 
the, the information disclosed online is uh, an accurate reflection of the official records that we have. Uh, well, in short, it's, it's not. Uh, most of the, most of the uh, online review pages failed to uh, pick out the, the events. Uh, those are, well, well, medical malpractice paid claims and uh, licensing disciplines are, are um, not that uh, common as, as uh, kind of uh, happens, repeatedly happen to the worst of doctors among the population of practicing doctors. So that is a, a little bit background. And as you can see from the table, um, the online reviews actually picks up uh, very few of those um, uh, those events. Um, the highlight is like four four percent of the previous uh, sanctioned and uh, sued doctors are actually picked up uh, by any of the review sites, and uh, four uh, four uh, percent, ten percent, and six percent. Um, 7% for um, medical malpractice claim. And uh, the first part of the slide is about disciplinary actions. And another um, point here is that uh, there's only one service try to offer uh, the background check among the five most popular uh, online review services. So that is another point for incomplete coverage. So only one of the five popular sites uh, even try to offer uh, the background check. And for, for that one services, it picks up um, some states, not all states from medical malpractice claims. And for our cases, um, Illinois is, uh, is reported and Indiana is not. Um, so that is another illustration of incomplete coverage. And lastly, well, for those states and information that do choose to, um, do they do choose to report, um, the accuracy rate is strikingly low. It's like four or uh, below 10% of accuracy. So that is uh, kind of, uh, concerning point for accuracy of the information that are disclosed. Um, and now, so uh, another uh, kind of uh, obvious question is, uh, what's the distribution of the mean uh, of the star rating looks like? And uh, I've mentioned that in previous studies, uh, previous studies of online consumer reviews, um, it is well established that most of the reviews are are uh, positive, and it's uh, and there's a well documented uh, phenomenon of distribution that uh, the online review uh, ratings have this J shaped distribution, J shaped uh, distribution. Um, this is kind of interesting. And for those of you who are not particularly uh, familiar with uh, statistics, um, the normal distribution of uh, a lot of things in our everyday life looks like this, which is a um, bell curve. Uh, that is, and that is uh, also why this is called on the right, uh, called a normal distribution. So, uh, Normally, uh, without any previous uh, research, we would imagine that most of the products or physicians or services being reviewed uh, would be like average. And there we would expect some of the services are extremely positive uh, and having the rating of like five stars. And we would also expect a, a few of them are extremely negative and being rated as one star or two star, but that is not actually the case. Um, the case is that the, the distribution of, of uh, ratings online uh, from all kinds of domains 
old sh shapes like a J distribution, which is an uh, interesting phenomenon. Um, so a J-shaped distribution means that the vast majority uh, ratings are extremely high, extremely high. And uh, there are some of them uh, with one star. And the middle part is, uh, is like the, the least common. And bear in mind that in our sample, we have the worst 0.2% of the doctors in both state. And this is, um, well, this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, concerning uh, all, the, uh, all the questionable doctors are uh, plotted in gray and the control doctors are, uh, well, in, in, in uh, blank. And so uh, in our cases, the questionable doctors um, do um, appear to be uh, less frequent to be uh, uh, distributed at uh, the, the, the highest end, but it also uh, appears to have this J-shaped distribution, um, which is a little bit surprising and concerning because again, they are the worst 0.2% uh, of the doctors in the state. And yet 20% uh, of them have five stars. Uh, that is the highest. Uh, across all uh, review platforms. Um, this is another uh, point for the accuracy uh, uh, part of it. Um, and there's another uh, way to, uh, uh, well, obvious way to look at uh, the, the, the accuracy that is we compare cases, case uh, questionable versus control. And we um, hypothesis that the, the hypothesis is that uh, well questionable doctor will have lower ratings than control doctors. So these are the actual uh, comparisons. And the short version is that um, the differences are minimum, and most of the differences are not statistically significant. Uh, as you can see, so the differences are like point, a point 0.4, point 0.5, a point 0.3 differences. That is just a half stars. Um, and how much of a differences are between the, the 4.5 and the five star doctors? And do you care when you look at the ratings and so the differences are not that, uh, not that um, um, well impression uh, impressive and 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 most of them are actually not significant uh, statistically significant um, and well there are um, uh, variations across states and uh, and across uh, rating services um, but again most of them are not. Uh, impressive and not even statistically significant. Uh, and Yelp even kind of didn't try to cover um, cover the doctors. And, and so most of the uh, Indiana doctors are not available from Yelp, um, which is believed to be the single most popular review site in uh, the United States and probably around the world. Um, so that is, uh, kind of uh, uh, the comparison and other aspect for, uh, for the, the, the accuracy side. And uh, one last uh, way to look at accuracy is to compare the ratings of the sa same doctors across various uh, rating sites. Um, so that is uh, the, the consistency or the correlation of uh, the same doctors across different uh, platforms. And this is a, a kind of a heat map for a better illustration. So uh, the darker the, uh, the color, uh, the better the correlation. And for those of you who are more familiar with uh, the statistical term, uh, the correlation coefficient will be, uh, if the a correlation coefficient is one that is a perfect correlation and it, if it's zero then the, there's no correlation but it's um, color coded 
and the idea is that uh, the correlation is uh, not impressive as well. And uh, the dark, the darkest color for Yelp, um, the pairwise correlation between Yelp and health grade is the darkest, but it, uh, but it has something to do with Yelp covering very little, very few doctors in our sample. Um, so it's um, uh, it's in short, it's a very poor uh, consistency or correlation among different uh, rating services. And uh, that is an yet another aspect for the accuracy uh, part of the information. And uh, this is another version for the correlation, which conveys the similar information for uh, correlation, but it's a scatter plot. So if you, uh, so we uh, kind of plot the ratings, uh, individual ratings for the two most popular, uh, two uh, rating services that have the most ratings among the fives. And we try to look at uh, whether they correlate, the, the, the data points correlate with each other. Um, and the lines are, um, well, if the line is uh, like 45 degree, that is a perfect correlation. If it's a horizontal line, it is uh, basically no correlation. And you can see um, the lines, both lines are uh, not particularly showing uh, an impressive correlations. So that is another way to show uh, the consistency. So, so far we've looked at star ratings and we look at basically coverage and accuracy that answers the question of whether uh, there are information available about the doctors that we are interested to see. And, uh, and, and second, whether the information are accurate according to um, our official record of medical malpractice claims and uh, licensing discipline, which um, kind of signals the worst doctors uh, in the population. And the short version is the coverage is incomplete and the accuracy is not impressive. Um, so then um, uh, the part that I, I personally are more uh, exciting about, uh, those are the written comments and where we employed uh, the natural language processing uh, to uh, analysis. Uh, analysis. Um, so in this part, uh, we, we kind of developed our analysis into uh, two parts, um, two lines of inquiry. Uh, the first more obvious thread is that we still try to compare case versus control, that is questionable doctors versus clean record. Uh, control doctors and try to see uh, whether the written comments are systematically differentiable uh, between the case versus control doctors. And there's a, actually a second thread in this written comment section that is, uh, we actually, if we didn't find any differences uh, between the case and control doctors, then uh, do we find uh, any systematical differences if we look at uh, the reviews associated with high uh, high re uh, high ratings versus low ratings. Um, so the idea again is to see uh, whether patients talk about different things when they talk about uh, the worst doctors versus um, nice doctors. And uh, uh, an, uh, another uh, question is whether the comments uh, have associated with high ratings and are different from those reviews associated with low ratings? Uh, are they differentiable to start with? Uh, if not, then, uh, then that's an, uh, a more uh, basically uh, concerning point. Um, but the idea is to see whether uh, the written comments are systematically different. So uh, just a little bit more details about uh, natural language processing and what we do in this section. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the language that we used as human beings are uh, inherently high dimensional. 
Um, so basically what the first step and the foremost important thing to uh, in uh, using text as data is to break the text into words um, or in technical terms, reduce dimensionality. Um, the idea is that if we analyze text in units of paragraph or sentences, then any of the data points will be different and it will be extremely hard to make any meaningful inferences. So the first step is to break down the text into words. And then another step would be uh, eliminate unimportant words. Those are the glues in everyday communication in uh, most languages, but they do not actually convey much of information like, uh, like but, and, I, you, things like that. Uh, uh, we, we try to drop those words because they do not convey too much information. And um, another kind of cleaning step is to reduce the words into their base form. Uh, like we uh, cling the word went uh, to go. And for, uh, we would cling the words boys to boy. That is uh, another kind of uh, cleaning steps. And the end product will be uh, a very clean material that is a bag of words uh, without any uh, link from grammar. And there are uh, no uh, all the words in the back of words conveys important information. And we will uh, make further inferences, extract information from those uh, back of words. Um, so that back of words are actually uh, in technical, technical terms uh, is a matrix of frequency of each word among different documents. Uh, but the main idea is that uh, we break text into uh, words and those words are very clean. Um, they don't have, uh, well, they, we standardize them. Standardized is probably the better word. So we break down the text into standardized words um, and we make further analysis. Okay, okay, time. Um, so uh, uh, what we do is that we analyze uh, word, cho word choices, differences, and common uh, commonality. And we uh, try to analyze the different feelings and emotions that involved by the words. And most importantly, we try to extract the topic from, uh, uh, from the text that is the written comments. Um, and we try to, again, answer the question of what information is disclosed and are the information correlated with quality information. Um, so word frequency, um, these are uh, kind of the word frequency for um, case versus, uh, that is questionable doctors versus control doctors. Those are the most frequently used words, uh, biograms actually, those are the pair of words that are used together uh, in questionable doctor's reviews and in clean doctor's reviews. And um, it may or may, may not be surprising to you, but most of the reviews are uh, not about uh, diagnose or uh, treatment of conditions. It's more about interpersonal skills or other ancillary aspect of medical treatment. It's about bedside manner. It's about uh, whether the doctor takes time to ask, ask for uh, the conditions. And uh, it's more about uh, the reviewer's credibility or past experience with the doctor to establish uh, their capacity of uh, a reviewer. And finally, it's about whether the reviewer recommend or not uh, a, a visit to this doctor. So this is us, and this is the same for both questionable and control doctors. Both are about ancillary aspect of uh, the healthcare, not actually about clinical uh, outcomes. And um, if you look at the scatter plot, we have questionable on axis and we have controls on y's and the distribution of words are extremely strikingly similar. Um, and similar, so that is uh, kind of the point. So um, we, so as we mentioned, we also like to see whether uh, the sentiment that is the Latin emotion, the feelings are different 
from uh, the reviews uh, uh, for the questionable versus control doctors. And this is kind of a histogram of distributions. And the short version is not that difference, different. And uh, the control doctors um, are more uh, have more, uh, uh, so this is this change from uh, negative to positive. This is kind of a polarity uh, distribution. So it tests from a test whether there are negative versus positive emotions um, hided in text. So, um, well, the short version is it's not that different from uh, between the questionable versus control doctors. Although uh, control doctors do have more. Uh, condensed uh, positive reviews in the middle um, and questionable doctors are kind of more uh, scattered around uh, the two extremes. So another, uh, so we, we, this is uh, kind of the first conclusion that the, the comments, written comments are not that different between questionable versus control doctors. So then we ask ourselves whether the, the written comments are differentiable uh, uh, at first place. That is uh, the, 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 the low star rating comments and high star rating comments, are they different uh, to start with? So we look at uh, those reviews associated with high ratings and low ratings. Mm, now, that is where we actually see the differences. Uh, we see that uh, high rating comments are actually do recommend a visit. And, and uh, it talks about feel comfortable and, and bad, good bedside manners. And low star ratings, uh, the bottom line, it doesn't recommend go back and it uh, recommend a second opinion. Um, so, and again, if we look at the word frequency at, uh, with the form of scatter plot, uh, this is where we see the differences. So the, the one star rate uh, reviews and five star ratings uh, reviews are uh, now actually different. And if you compare that with the case versus control, um, questionable doctors and control doctor reviews use uh, surprisingly similar words. But if you look at one star versus five star, it's actually very different. So uh, last piece of uh, the findings is that we try to extract the actual topics from uh, the reviews using another set of uh, machine learning techniques and uh, we, uh, for the first, uh, for the one star ratings and five star uh, comments. Uh, and again, we do find differences. Uh, we find that there are basically glorious prize for uh, five star ratings. Uh, they talk about how excellent the doctor is. They talk about feel com uh, comfortable with the doctor. And there uh, basically are criticisms for the low star rating uh, comments. They talk about the doctor is the worst, and it, uh, he or she is rude, and there are unprofessional behavior involved. Um, so this is basically uh, the part of our uh, written review analysis where we uh, uh, find uh, basically no differences when we look at the questionable doctor versus uh, control doctors. But again, uh, but then we try to find out whether there are differences to, to start with. So we look at uh, the reviews associated with low star ratings versus uh, comments with highest ratings. And that is where we actually find the differences. So the second part is kind of reassuring. So the written comments do uh, convey different uh, Talk, uh, cover different topics, have different emotions, uh, use different words, but that difference we do not see in um, questionable doctors versus control doctors. So the, the first part is very concerning. Now, so uh, this is our findings and let me actually uh, uh, return to uh, the point that I start with, which is, um, which, uh, which is uh, the kind of the broader uh, appeal or the big pic bigger picture of our study. Um, so this is, uh, again, the healthcare services, it's just uh, a classical example of uh, quality information uh, issue. So we see that uh, uh, issue being studied in all kinds of um, domains. Um, 
Let me actually find that. Um, so we uh, we see that a study uh, those kind of in, uh, quality information studies in, in all kinds of domains. Um, for uh, financial uh, markets, we always study uh, people studied the market response to bond ratings, and um, in contract in healthcare in public health in uh, professional services. So those are all empirical evidence from different areas to contribute our uh, actual understanding of how information actually functions in real uh, real everyday life. Um, do the uh, do information really helps uh, consumer decisions as the, the theoretical predictions. Um, our uh, research contribute to that subject matter um, by studying the specific domain of healthcare services. And our um, uh, findings uh, sort of um, contribute to the, the inquiry of what, where the quality is multidimensional. In our cases, there are clinical uh, aspects of uh, quality and there are also interpersonal aspects of quality that is uh, the bedside manners and and do the physicians make you feel comfortable um, this is where the economists called uh, the multi-dimensional quality and when some of the dimension is uh, disclosed in our cases uh, the interpersonal uh, aspect or uh, the ancillary aspect of healthcare services is disclosed, and other aspect of the quality that is clinical quality, which um, involves diagnose and treatment of the conditions, are not exactly disclosed. Uh, this is um, the kind of the setting or the conclusion that uh, we see in our data, and this is um, concerning because uh, when the quality is multi. Uh, dimension and some of the quality is disclosed and other are not, then that might uh, fill, uh, fill the, the information flow to uh, help the consumer to make the informed uh, decision. So when you think about it, uh, consumers went online to find a doctor that makes better diagnose and treat treat con their conditions. But what what they see online is more about bedside manner and whether the the doctors are polite. Um, so this is a different aspect of the the, uh, the the quality. And the physicians, if they act upon that and uh, employ some blaming behavior, they will try to kind of boost the the the, the performance of bedside manners, uh, interpersonal skills. But they will sacrifice uh, the clinical standard. And if further uh, worse, if the consumers actually uh, see that information and act on that information, it will not help them to make uh, the informed decision that we predict they will make. Uh, that is the vertical sorting and the horizontal sorting uh, will not happen and they will be steered to a different direction of uh, uh, doctors that are otherwise would be suggested by a sub objective uh, measure of clinical services. So again, this is just a, a, a specific domain that we study and try to contribute to the subject matter of uh, information disclosure and it's, uh, as a uh, quality uh, control mechanisms. Um, again, there are multiple uh, areas uh, working on that issue and we are not able to solve that problem today, obviously, but um, that is our study and uh, uh, the, the, our contribution, and I, I think I will stop there, and I will happy to take questions and comments. Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Liu, for your uh, outstanding uh, presentation. Uh, it, your research is really illuminating uh, and thought provoking. Um, well, before we open the floor uh, to the audience, uh, we have, uh, as we mentioned earlier, we have uh, Professor Liu. Uh, who will give a uh, discussion. Uh, over to you, uh, Professor Lu. Okay. Um, thank you, Chao, and thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you, Chao, for the invitation. Let me share my screen, yeah. And thank you. Um, yeah, can you all see it? Yeah. 
Yeah, OK. Uh, thank you, Professor Liu Jing, for the very informative and interesting presentation. Um, so um, I'm Haitian Lu from Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Um, so I do a quick uh, summary of this paper. So I think the motivation uh, of this paper comes from your early uh, studies. You find that prior work finds that occupational licensing or tort liabilities often fail to assure the quality of doctors. Now you want to find whether online review as an information source new, may be or could be a credible signal of quality which patients can rely on to pick up their doctors. Uh, so to summarize your finding, it is found that the online ratings or reviews um, for the alleged worst 0.2% of physicians are not substantially different from a control group of physicians with clean record, suggesting that the online reviews or online ratings may be uh, not value relevant or non-informative. And then of course, uh, you recognize the um, inadequate coverage of doctors, poor quality of reviews, and the modest at best um, correlations among different rating services. So uh, my, my comments are centered on several aspects. First, um, on the overall topic. So I asked myself, is this topic in both important and interesting? The answer is clearly yes. So because first, finding a good doctor matters everybody's life and health. And secondly, the information asymmetry between patient and doctor is perhaps the largest among professional services. And thirdly, so in this, doc, uh, in this market, so the adverse selection is quite serious. So the good doctors truly need to reliable quality signals to differentiate themselves. And however, unlike in other sectors, so the information on the true quality of doctor in the healthcare sector is very scarce, probably because the patients are, there's privacy reasons for, for patients. Okay, so this topic is important. Then I'm thinking about what is the best empirical strategy to answer your question. So remember, your question is whether online reviews are a reliable proxy for doctor's quality. So, so what is the ideal test? So I think that the ideal test is, um, I'm thinking about the controlled experiment, okay? So in, an, in a controlled experiment, you may be able to find, okay, two otherwise identical doctors. So this is what you do, okay, matching them based on specialty, qualifications, age, uh, medical schools, and others. However, the only difference is Dr. A is high rated, Dr. B is low rated. And then you find a group of patients and then randomly divide them into two groups, okay? So the first group is treated by A, the second group is treated by B without knowing ex ante who is high or who is low rated. And then after they are treated, you conduct a survey exposed on their satisfaction level and then compare whether the patients treated by the high rated doctor uh, have significantly higher satisfaction. Then you can make inference on whether consumers could rely on the online review rating to choose their doctor. So this is my ideal kind of controlled experiment. Of course, I know that um, this is uh, very difficult to, to, to implement in, in, in practice. So given it is hard to implement, I'm thinking about what should be the second best test. I think the second best test is to, to test the I call it a validity test on the correlation between the online reviews and observable proxies of doctor's reputation or quality. As you mentioned, for example, um, I'm not familiar with doctors, healthcare sectors, but since we are all academics, so what are our, what we call it, reputational quality signals? For example, qualifications, whether we have PhDs, whether our PhD is from esteemed schools or post-qualification experience, seniority, or doctors also write publications. We write publications, okay? Reputation in the profession or 
network centrality, and for example, as you mentioned, the disciplinary actions or malpractice claims that we encountered. So I think all these are either positive or negative signals of quality. So I think what you could do is you first do a, a, a correlation kind of test on whether your ratings is correlated with observable signal, quality signals. I think this is something important. And, and secondly, I think that your, your, your network centrality is um, the, the, one of the reasons that you don't find a correlation is because this is an imperfect proxy of, uh, of doctor's quality. As you mentioned, it may capture the interpersonal skills rather than the clinical um, uh, quality. Okay, and then, so when I try to interpret your result, I think that you find there's little correlation between your reputation proxy, that is online review, and some other reputation proxy, which is disciplinary action malpractice claims. So to me, this is not surprising because both mirrors are, are imperfect proxy, okay, for, for doctor's quality. So, so as a prior literature has documented, there's little variations on ratings. Okay, so most ratings are positive, very high. And secondly, there are the, the, the consumer satisfactions may be affected by factors unobservable to you. Okay, could be um, the interpersonal skills, could be the price, could be the, the even appearance, okay? So also, the, as you correctly pointed out, the disciplinary action does not equal to clinical quality. So I'm curious, uh, what are the courses of disciplinary actions? For example, is it like a, um, moral wrongdoings or, or, or receiving rebates or, or what are the courses? So if these courses are uncorrelated with professional uh, quality, then there's no surprising, okay? Um, and to me, um, to see whether online review is a reliable proxy for doctor's quality, the classical economic approach is to observe how the patients alter their views or alter their ratings on a doctor following a change in belief. In that case, we need a positive or negative shock to, poly, uh, to the doctor's reputation. So because this shock is actually review the type good or bad of this doctor. And then we observe how the online review ratings change following the shock. So this is similar to what we do in finance, the stock or bond price reaction to corporate disclosures, because such disclosure reviews the type of the company. Um, and next is I think that uh, in order to, to, to frame your research question, I think institutional setup is important. To my understanding, the doctors are very differently regulated in different jurisdictions, in different countries or even states. So in the context that you studied, so I want to know that, for example, in this market, do patients actively search for physicians? So, or are doctors allowed to openly promote themselves on the website? Because according to my Hong Kong experience, doctors are not allowed to, 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 to market themselves on the website or in the open sources. Or if they are allowed in the States, then a number of other factors may affect customer satisfaction. So remember in your ratings, some, some, some uh, customers maybe they have been treated by this doctor, but some others, they may not be. So there's ex anti and exposed consumers, okay? And then finally, I think that if we, I want to find a, 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 a good proxy for doctor quality. So if they have a price, okay, the price is the best proxy for, for quality. And, and also the, I noticed that you are doing a lot of natural language processing, okay? So, uh, so in finance, we are doing textual analysis a lot. And we know that um, the, the devils are in the details. So of course we can, we can discuss more on that. Uh, so finally, I think um, this, this paper is a very interesting one. It provides us more food for thought. So I think the, the, the interesting question, future question is, given the present regulatory system of doctors, albeit they are imperfect, is allowing the online review of doctors a good idea? 
Okay, in other words, is online review of doctors adding more signal or more noise to, to the market? Okay, and finally, I think that um, there's no easy conclusion to this question. It is possible that online review is helpful for choosing certain type of doctors, but not others, for example, rare disease. But in that case, you need to provide a answer why, okay? Then, then that's all my sharing. Thank you. Well, thank you, Professor uh, Haitian, for this uh, very thorough uh, and um, uh, and uh, I'm sure very helpful uh, discussion. Uh, Professor Liu, I wonder if uh, you might want to give a quick, let's yeah. say, uh, Let me, uh, yeah, I do have a, on the floor. yeah, I do have a, a few uh, quick response to. Uh, the comments. So uh, uh, first of all, thank you for the comments. Uh, you raised a number of uh, uh, different points. So, uh, but the first one that I uh, want to point out that uh, we actually framed the paper a little bit different from what you uh, 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 kind of summarized. Um, we didn't try to see whether uh, well, we well, it's a, a slightly different uh, question. We didn't actually try to see if online review is a reliable proxy of quality. We didn't try to do that because there's an established line of uh, literature in healthcare service quality uh, about what actually is the uh, clinical standard of quality. And uh, we actually covered that in our previous studies. We actually do study uh, the clinical quality we studied. Uh, uh, and also that is related to your uh, another point that is all other pract practicing attributes, including uh, reputations and certifications and uh, educational background, things like that. And the ranking of the hospital, for example. Um, and other, uh, for example, gender, uh, uh, age, that is uh, demographic information and how is that related to uh, this, uh, the established standard uh, for quality. Um, so that, that part is actually covered in our other studies. Uh, in this study, we are not trying to see whether online review is a reliable proxy for quality. Uh, the, the, we, we, don't, we didn't even try to start with that point. Uh, online review is, uh, we, we didn't expect it to be, uh, honestly, a, a reliable proxy for quality. Uh, what we try to see, it is similar, but uh, kind of uh, differently framed. The, the kind of quality that we have uh, in our mind, uh, which is established in the previous literature, literature is um, uh, medical malpractice and clinical uh, and, and uh, licensure status. Um, and that is kind of used in as our standard. And uh, we use the word as quality as short form of medical malpractice and discipline history. So we are not trying to see whether online review is a proxy of quality. We are trying to see whether online review uh, covers the same standard that captured by malpractice suits and disciplinary actions. That is the first point uh, to answer your question or comments about uh, or the designs of uh, whether quality is a reliable proxy. Um, this is framed a little bit different. Uh, so the standard we have we have already uh, established, and we want to see whether the online review uh, kind of review the similar information in that. Um, so uh, another point that you raised is uh, was the uh, why we actually expect. Uh, the online review to cover the information from the same information from malpractice suits and disciplinary actions. Uh, why exactly do we expect to see that? This is another, uh, this is the question that we actually uh, got asked when we presented elsewhere. So um, this is a fair question, I guess. Um, uh, Although that is, uh, again, we are not trying to see whether online review as a proxy for uh, uh, quality. We are uh, trying to see, uh, well, the question is why we start, uh, what we expected to see uh, the same information are being covered by the two systems, uh, by the, the three systems actually. Um, 
Well, the short answer for that is, uh, well, these are the worst doctors. And if we want to see, expected to see the information disclosed anywhere, then we expected to see that um, in online review. That is a relatively low cost search. And people can also search the information if they type into the Department of Insurance website or uh, the state medical licensing board, but that is a more complicated search. So uh, that is um, a fair question, I think. And that is why we uh, uh, think uh, there might be uh, the online reviews can cover or why we uh, actually expected the online review to cover the same information. And there's another uh, uh, a point that you uh, raised that uh, the grounds of a related point that was the grounds for disciplinary actions. And uh, if the grounds are different from clinical quality, then why do we actually want, uh, expect it to see an overlap between uh, discipline and uh, uh, online reviews? Uh, we actually have a specific paper on that, uh, on the grounds of disciplinary actions, the reasons and the results and things like that. Uh, this, so this is covered in another paper. Uh, the short answer is that uh, disciplinary action covers a, a whole lot of different backgrounds, and uh, we do have a, a, an unreported analysis uh, on that topic. So that is uh, also covered. Um, for uh, your other uh, comments about the ideal uh, uh, research on whether uh, uh, consumer review will be an ideal proxy for quality, um, well, I, Mo well, assigning high rated uh, physician to treat the same uh, uh, patients versus low rating uh, doctors might have some ethical question, uh, problems. And uh, the experimental design this is, is not that common in especially the domain of healthcare uh, services, as I, uh, I assume that uh, it's, uh, it's, um, uh, it's a starting point. Um, uh, the shark in reputation, and uh, which is another uh, direction for research, and and whether uh, the shark in reputation, this is another uh, actually uh, direction for further research. Um, we definitely have uh, thought about it. Uh, so uh, most of our previous research actually focused on uh, reliable causal inferences. So. Uh, most of our uh, research did uh, focused on um, a kind of uh, a more uh, traditional kind of statistical analysis. Uh, so shocking reputation is also uh, very commonly used in uh, our domains. And uh, it's probably another direction for further uh, research. And thank you for that suggestion. And uh, a, a last point that is, uh, uh, well, another small point about prices, best proxy of quality, that is not uh, exactly the established stand in, uh, in the domain of healthcare quality. Uh, we price, uh, especially in the United States, as a whole nother different story. And uh, may, uh, there are studies used uh, uh, clients uh, volumes as best proxy for, uh, for um, it, but it's not quality again. So our, our question is framed a little bit different. We are not actually trying to see online review as a proxy of uh, uh, quality. Quality, proxy of quality is um, established in our uh, research and we, we are trying, uh, trying to see whether if online reviews uh, review, uh, review any of those information. So uh, price is probably not the best proxy for uh, healthcare quality. Um, and uh, the last point for uh, allow, uh, whether allow online review is the best idea. So uh, uh, whether allow or disallow uh, is probably not the, the uh, up, uh, <laughs> Uh, probably not a topic that we are trying to address, especially in the context of the United States. Um, uh, but I do get the idea that uh, there's a noise uh, uh, theory in security dis uh, information disclosure. And I do think that is a valid discussion point for our paper. So I also thank you for that suggestion. Um, a last uh, a small point about whether uh, online review is best, uh, better a toy to uh, uh, 
tool to uh, pick up certain type of doctors. Uh, we actually do have that information, and but we didn't try to uh, pursue that. But we uh, we will try to do that uh, 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 before we actually um, finish the paper. So I also thank you for that suggestion. Uh, yeah, that is uh, the quick response for uh, the very thorough uh, comments. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Leo. Uh, well, I should uh, thank you, uh, thank both of you, uh, for bringing to us such a wonderful conversation uh, on research design, on framing of issues. Uh, this is, uh, to me, this is a, a very, um, uh, very uh, educating uh, process. Um, well, with that, uh, I, uh, I invite uh, all of you uh, in audience uh, to uh, to give our speaker uh, and our discussant. A, a big round of uh, uh, virtual applause. Thank you for uh, this uh, great presentation and uh, wonderful uh, discussion. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you.